Grade 11. Now we get to a more complicated drawing for one simple reason. The branch is still the same. Oh, sorry, the, the trunk part. It's still a square prism. But now the branch, the second hollow prism, is a hexagon prism or hexagonal prism. And it's at an angle. So now you'll see how interesting it will be, um, the f things will become. What they've given you is the complete top view but not the complete front view. We still have to finish the development there. And they want us to draw the, let me see, do we have to draw a left view or something as well? Uh, -uh no. So only these two views, full view, complete this view, and then develop the two prisms. Okay, let's do this. First, let's just draw what was given. Another way you can draw a square that I, uh, that I forgot about um, that I saw in an, another video I posted to you yesterday is you take the length of the side of the square, which is 38. You draw a circle. Now this doesn't make sense. Why is it so big? I oh, so half of it. So, um, 19, 19. So you draw this, so you draw And draw the um, squares adjacent to the or the square adjacent to the circle. So it's just another method you can do it. Now, I'm just gonna use a pen. Please don't use a pen. I'm just using it um, to make the picture more clear. And now I can't complete the top view yet because I first just need a part of the front view to do it. So I'm going to the front view. Ah, now here's a good question. What is the length of that side? We don't know. So what we're going to do is go back to your top view. We're going to draw what they call an auxiliary view of the hexagon so that we can get that answer. So somewhere here where there's space, I'm going to draw my hexagon. 
I remember the quickest way to draw a hexagon, let's take the measurement of 22, which is the side of the length of the side of a hexagon. In this picture, draw a circle. back okay then for the length it's um, from there to there because remember this is a top view and if you turn it it's from there to there so this length here now you just go and measure it I have 39 if you get 40 or something close to 39, perfect. I bring it down. There you go. Now the next part is then complete the front view. Now to complete the front view, just remember if this is the front view, we are positioned here looking this way. So I'm going to bring this line forward. Oh, sorry. Got this line upwards and we project it up. This one here. Okay. Then extend, extend these ones down. Then connect them together.
we go. And here's the completed front view. Now, before we do anything else, let's number this picture because we're going to need it. I'm going to make the try to make the numbering a bit more simplistic by doing this. Okay, I'm just going to number the one side. So I'll make this A, B, C, D, and then this is A, A, B, D, B, D, and C, C. Now from here, we'll have to do our two developments. Now let's see. Um, for the big square prism, I think there's enough space here to develop it next to it, which makes which is the easiest. For the other one, I'll have to do it here at the bottom. So I'm going to first do the big, the trunk part, as I call it, the, the larger part. Okay, so I'm going to take it across. First part will start here, and now we're gonna we need four parts, okay, because it's square. So now watch what I do. You can either set it on your ruler or just on your picture itself. Now, again, I didn't specify where to open it, you know, where to make the seam, but I want this hole in the middle so it looks, you know, you can see it more clearly. So I'm going to open up the seam at A. So this is how the labeling will look like. A, A. Uh, wait, wait. A, and then this is D and D. C, C. B, B. And A, A. Now, because it's in line, it's a bit easier to draw. And before we start drawing it, what we also need is we have C. Okay, C is that corner there. So since C is on the corner, it's this part. We've got it here. Okay, because I'm projecting it from there and here. But the up, there's two more points from C to B and from C to D. So you take your compass. Measure it from C towards B. Okay. So from C towards B. And the same for C towards D. And then the bigger one. Then the, the two inside parts project it, project it across, and then for the larger one, there and there. When you connect everything together, and again, I'm going to use a pen just to make it more clear. There you go. Oops. Okay. 
Now the next part is to develop the small one. Okay, so that, there's the big one if you fold it open. That's the hole. That's how the hole looks like. Now for the small one, if there was space, you could have projected it across here, which would have made it easier, but there's not. So now I'm going to just do it here where there's space. Again, now this is six parts because it's a hexagonal, hexagonal prism. So I'm going to set this, get the size there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And again, we can do, we can open up anywhere. So, oh, and I haven't numbered it yet. So just number it so it can make, it, you can follow along. So I'm going to number it. Let's number it. Let's say I want to open it. Mm, Hmm. I'm trying to think where I'm gonna open that. Anyway, let's let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. One, six, two, five, three, and four. So let's just open it up at at one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one again. Okay, so there's my line at the there's my line at the back at the bottom. Now draw lines up. How far? We don't know yet. So this is just construction. Okay. Now to get the limb. You have to go back to you can't use this because it's not the true length that's the true length okay so for one and six measured from there to there okay then go to one and six one and six then for two and five Two and five, and then three and four. Then three and four. Then there's one corner that we have to keep in mind. There's a corner between one and six, and at the bottom below at three and four. So to get that distance. So from one towards six, so from one towards six, from six towards one, and then between three and four, the same story. So between three and four. And that distance, remember it's on the corner. So between one and six, it's the distance from there to there. Okay. That's between one and six. Yeah. Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, there's nothing between one and two. So ignore that part. And then three and four. Okay, so there's between one and six and three and four. I got the measurement where I got the measurements. Now, when you connect them together, obviously our pictures could look different if you st open up or create a seam in a different position. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the right order unless they specify a, s a certain order you have to open it. Okay. 
darken the lines where the numbers are. Remember, I'm using pen to make it more clear on the video. Please don't use pen. This is just for video purposes. And there's the development of the branch or the hexagonal prism. And there's the development for the square prism. There you go. Thank you, Gray 11s. So this is today for period two. And you can finish this tomorrow in your single period. Thank you.